So in last class, what are the things we have studied? The main topic was the radioactivity. So what are the things we have found in the case of radioactivity? First of all, we have a, a sample of unstable nuclei. It is ready to decay. So it is a completely random phenomena. Is a radioactivity, but it still follows the law. That is, there are some laws which are governing it. The law is a radio law of radioactivity. So during the radioactive process, what are things we have observed is that some particles will be released, such as alpha, beta, gamma radiation is what we call, it. and it is completely unaffected by the external physical and chemical conditions. And uh, so, and as the time goes on, the sample is going to decrease. That is, number of active nuclei which are decaying as the time goes on, it is decreasing. And we have start, we have seen the properties of alpha decay. So whenever an alpha particle is released, for every one alpha particle, what changes occur? For every one alpha particle, the atomic number will decrease by 2 and whereas mass number will decrease by 4. And so there are some examples that we have seen. And during any nuclear reaction, what are the things which you have to conserve is conservation of energy, energy plus mass. Conservation of energy plus mass, you should do conservation. And conservation of charge, nucleon number should be conserved and conservation of lean momentum. These four laws we should apply. So that is, where are the four laws you are seeing here? This is the fourth one. That is conservation of charge, conservation of nuclear number, conservation of lean momentum and conservation of mass. So, and then so beta decay. Beta decay is when an electron or positron is coming out of the nucleus. It is due to when electron is going to come out, when a neutron converts into proton plus electron and also an anti-neutron is going to come with it. And beta plus decay is when a positron is coming when the proton decays into neutron. When a neutron comes with a neutron, a neutrino will come as well. And also one more beta decay we have seen is electron capture. When the nucleus captures one of the inertial electron, it is also called as K capture. That is the K shell. From K shell, one electron is removed. That is also known as K capture, electron capture, during which the proton plus electron will combine to form the neutron. And the neutrino will come with it. And gamma decay is when excited nucleus comes down to ground state during this process, it emits a gamma ray. So we have seen the properties alpha, beta, gamma properties, and uh, so especially the two orders that is ionizing power, ionizing power of alpha, beta, gamma. Alpha is the highest, where gamma is the lowest ionizing power, whereas penetrating power, gamma is the highest, where alpha is the least. And the remaining things are normal, normal standard things. They are what happens, we have seen that. The decay is happening and alpha, beta, gamma emission is taking place. But as time passes, the nuclei, nuclei is going to disintegrate. And only some nuclei are going to disintegrate at a particular time. Not all that is obeyed by law of radioactivity, which says that the rate of radioactive decay is proportional to the number of active nuclei present. That is minus d by dt is proportional to n. And if you move the proportionality, we will get a constant lambda. Decay constant is unique for a nuclei. And what are the questions we asked is, four questions we asked. First, how many nuclei are going to remain after some time? That is, number of active nuclei at time t. What is the relation we got? n is equal to n0 into e power minus lambda t. And the next we have calculated is half-life. The time taken for the, the active nuclei sample become to half of it. For every one half-life, the number of active nuclei becomes half. First half-life, it becomes n0 by 2. Second half-life, it becomes n0 by 4. Third half life it becomes a not by eight. So in this way, as the number keeps on decreasing, the, the half lives are going to add up. Then average life or the mean life we call it as we represent the symbol tau, which is one by lambda it is come. So the relation is the p half is equal to 0 0.693 times of average life it is. Then we have seen activity or radioactivity, which is nothing but number of disintegrations per second. Right? And then we have seen the graphs and we have calculated the t half and the main important formula for mains t half based questions they will be coming but if initially the sample is 10,000 after one half will become 5,000 then 2,500 in this way the t half will be keep on going then average life we have seen so after the integration part this is comes out to be like uh, that is one by lambda it is coming out mean life the relation t half is equal to 0 0.693 times of this and uh, so what is the one more way of defining the mean life is it's a time taken in which the number of active nuclei becomes 1 by 18, 1 by e times of the original. And uh, so how many 
y particles like if x is a parent nuclei and y is a daughter nuclei out of if, if you are starting from n0 after some time the number of particles remaining is n0 into e power minus lambda t how many particles of n y is remaining how do we get this how do you get y particles so always nx and ny the sum of these two should be equal to n0 only right yes sir that means if you want to find ny, what is ny is equal to n0 minus nx it is. nx, we already know, we substitute here. It is somewhat n0 minus n0 into e power minus lambda t. If we take n0 common, the number of uh, y particles remaining at time t is, this is what it is called. How many nucleate decayed? How many, if they ask, this is a remaining part. How many remaining is n0 into e power minus lambda t? If they ask how many nucleate decayed, that is again from initial, if you subtract the remaining part, so, whatever the NY is coming is due to the decade only. The number of NY particles also representing how many nuclei got decayed as well. Right? And then we are seeing uh, two special cases. One is a parallel decay or the simultaneous decay where one nuclei is disintegrating into two different types. Actually, we see it's a W or some S. You can say anything it is. Then, so we are seeing. So, during the simultaneous decay, then the due to two processes, the number is decreasing. So, due to the first process, the number decrease is minus lambda 1 into n. Due to second process, minus lambda 2 into n. So, total number decreases. If we take lambda, uh, that is n common, minus common, then lambda equivalent is lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Then, so new t half is coming out of what? That is t1, t2 by t1 plus t2 for two parallel decays. Then, we have seen how to find, how to measure radioactivity. Radioactivity is nothing but number of disintegration per second. That is minus dn by dt only. And already we know minus dn by dt is lambda n. The place of n we write n0 into e power minus lambda t. This lambda into n0 represents initial activity. n0 is initial number of active nuclei. Whereas lambda into n0 is initial activity. But as time goes on, activity is also going to fall. Because active nuclei is going to fall. And so we can use what is the half-life for activity also. The same formula that is t half formula is what? 0 0.693 by lambda that is a log 2 base e by lambda it is then what are the units we are saying one disintegration per second is back barrel 10 power 6 disintegration per second is 1 rutherford 3.7 into 10 power 10 disintegration per second is 1 curie right and so one other case is a series disintegration where x is changing into y and y is changing into like yesterday we said w or z something here and then we have seen how do you find the number of y particles how do you find number of y nuclei after some time? We've done the integration and finally we said that n y is coming out to be something lambda 1 into n0 by lambda 2 minus this. And one more thing we haven't done is the probability. The probability that the nuclei will survive or decay. Because it is random phenomena, right? It is random phenomena. Every, every moment to moment, every time to time, some nuclei will be remaining, some nuclei will be disintegrated. If there are some thousand nuclei, if you're picking one nuclei in that, what is the probability that it will survive the next moment or it is going to decay? How do you calculate? So, the probability of survival. So, probability of survival is based upon the number of nuclei. If more are present, then so there is a chance that there is a, we can say what? The probability of survival is equal to number which is present. If they are remaining means they survive. That's what. If they are remaining means they survive. So, number which are remaining by N0 will give you the probability of survival. So, uh, that is directly we are saying, eventually at t is equal to 0, at t is equal to 0, if the number is n0, then as time passes, what is the thing you are seeing, as the time passes here, then the number of nuclei is becoming n, then at that time, each nuclei, if you are picking one nuclei, whether it is going to decay or whether it is going to survive. So, survival depends upon how many are present at that time. If very few are present, then there's definitely it is that is its its chance has come like that. Like that. Finally, everything should decay, right? So its chance has come. Then the probability of survival, we are saying number of nuclear present divided by the actual number, initial number it is. Then probability of survival, it is going to decrease the time exponentially. And so either it will survive or it will decay. There are only two events. So some of both the probability should be is equal to one. Then probability of decay is equal to what? One minus probability of survival. So, probability of decay is 1 minus probability of survival that is 1 minus e power minus 1. This is what means they can ask the things directly to find the probability of survival.
because we know how to calculate the active nuclear rate. Okay, what are the ways to calculate the number which is going to present? The questions, uh, is there any difficulty in solving? If there is any model question, if there is difficulty, you can tell the page number and question number, we'll solve it now. Any difficulty? If it is there, we'll discuss. Okay, so but still there are two few uh, topics is there, like theoretical ones. First, one application, one major application of radioactivity is like uh, uh, archaeological people, like they will find the fossils and once they find the fossils, they will say this belongs to this age, this dinosaur belongs to this age or if they find any old structure, any they will say this belongs to this civilization, Indus Valley civilization, Mesopotamian. So how they will say that this civilization belongs to this age. We don't have any written history, right? So then how do, you, how do they determine that this is 5,000 years back or 10,000 years back? How do they tell? Understanding what is the thing we are trying to learn here. So to determine the age, to determine the age of any archaeological thing or any geological sample like any, uh, any ore is found or something, it is found. So to determine the age, the the application of radioactivity is used. So, for example, if you take an object, object is made up of many different minerals, atoms, molecules are there. And so not all atoms are of same nucleus. We have, a, we know that there are different isotopes. If you take carbon, carbon has isotopes. Every, every element has isotopes. Almost, almost everything has isotopes. If, even though we have 120 uh, elements in the periodic table, but you have 250 nucleus are stable. That means for every one element, there are like at least one or two isotopes are there. That means, and these isotopes are not going to be remaining stable forever. They are, they are also going to decay. So these are, that means this object, they are having normal elements. They have normal elements and also they have normal C12 kind of thing will be there and also their isotopes like C14 also will be there. Now the C14 will disintegrate or decay into C12. That is what is going to, it's a continuous process. So any object will have some trace element of radioactive substance will be there and decay will happen like a clock. The decay will happen at a regular intervals of time it is going to decay, right? So every, uh, like if you know, if initially the thousand are there, if it became 500, that means we'll say this is T half. After some time, if they are only 250, then you know how much time will you say? If this T half is two hours, then again, how much time has occurred between this to this, you'll say? Two one hour. Why one hour? Two hours, two hours two only, hours. right? This is T half and this also T half. So now, so by measuring the number, by measuring the number of active nuclei, we can tell the time. That is what the process is. They'll measure the number of active nuclei. In the given sample, how many active nuclei are there? They will compare with the original sample and they will, from the number, they will tell the time. So they will measure two things. So number of active nuclei present today and number of active nuclei present originally. So originally, how do they know? Originally, how do they know means we just will give the example. So originally, how much they should be there, we will know. If you know N0, if you know N, then how to find time? Simple, the relation is this. That is a T is equal to 1 by lambda. And lambda is fixed. And if you know this N, they'll measure, they'll be able to estimate the time. And this is one way of determining the age of the sample. Understood? How do they estimate the age here? Using the number of active nuclei present at the time which they found. Okay. Yeah, there are two unknowns now, sir. Where? There are two unknowns now, sir. How do they know how much was there initially? This this is known thing. This is no this is this is known thing. Because just I'll okay. We, when we come to carbon dating, we'll see here. But once again, I'll come back there. Carbon dating is a one method where carbon isotope is what they look for. So the, it's a method to estimate the age of fossils. All living organisms, what do they do? They'll be breathing, they'll be eating, they'll be... All the things are continuously cycle will be going on, right? Whenever you're eating, you're not only just eating like carbohydrates which have carbons. With the carbons, they'll also, not only C12 will come, C14 also will be consumed. Okay, all living organisms ingest carbon and they will maintain this 
quantity in equilibrium c14 will be maintained whenever whenever something is alive something is alive means it will have certain amount of carbon concentration will be there like this is an example here generally if you take any living organism it will have one c14 atom for every 8.3 to 10 power 11 c12 atoms when it is alive getting it this is a so n naught will be known getting yes, it sir. okay so n naught is known then once the organism dies now what is going to happen there is no consumption now now there is no input for c14 if c14 is not consumed whatever the c14 is present on that organism now it will undergo decay naturally it will undergo decay and it has some half life of 5730 years it is that means for every 5730 years what is going to happen the quantity will become half and half and half in this one getting it so in this way they will measure so based on now based on number of c14 atoms present at that time of measurement now they will compare with the original and they will date back and they will say that this is what this sample belongs to understood this is a known quantity this is a known quantity these two are known and from t half this is also known right then if all these three things are known then we'll find a time understood sir right so this is the questions so this is theoretical understanding questions will be asked on this they will say that presently this is a uh, and they will also instead of this n naught they will also say activity based in the place of n we can also write r and r naught also we can write same formula right t is equal to initially the activity is initially activities they will say this much now the presently the activity is this much now estimate the time has lapsed like that okay Yes, Only one problem. This is what the concept based question is. And now, and one more thing uh, we missed is packing fraction. Packing fraction, one question is there. Uh, again, stability, how do you measure? Again, just we are going previous topic. Stability of the nucleus, how do we tell? What are the factors? Binding energy per nucleon. Yes. So we have seen that first is binding energy per nucleon. If it is more, then more stability. That is one factor measurement. Then we have seen comparatively the number of neutron number by proton number. If it is greater than one, then then this these nucleus are also found to be more stable. And one more factor is packing fraction. Again, it is very similar to binding energy. How do we calculate binding energy? It is mass effect into C square. 31.5 right so here also packing fraction also but in in mass effect how do you find mass defect that is we said uh, mass of nucleons mass of nucleons minus mass of nucleus mass of, right? yes, mass of, atom of nuclei. nucleus so here packing fraction is also almost the same that is there but little differences here it is taken reverse. Reverse means it is mass of that is mass of nucleus, mass of nucleus minus mass of nucleons divided by mass. Okay, that is A minus mass of nucleons divided by. So just it's like minus it's minus of mass effect. In the numerator, what is the thing we are saying is minus of mass effect. That means if mass effect is more, binding energy is more, binding energy is more than binding energy per nuclear also can be more. But if mass effect is more, packing fraction will be less, right? Because it yes, is sir. negative. So what will happen is that, so whenever, now it is reverse, we should say. If packing fraction is less, then we should say more stable, we should say. Understand it? So since yes. it is a negative quantity, since it's a negative quantity, so we want to be more, more negative. If it is more negative, then it is indirectly more mass effect, then it is more stable. So these are the three factors we can say to measure the stability. 
Okay, packing fraction is additional thing which I haven't seen previously. Okay, so now uh, let us go for studying the nuclear fission. Okay, just radioactivity we covered, everything is covered. Nuclear fission and nuclear. So fission, when does fission will occur? So I will just will see first this one and So we need energy. We need energy. We have different forms of energy, but these energies are not uh, actually sufficient. So we are looking for alternate forms of energy. Then we found nuclear energy. So nuclear energy, how do we utilize or how do we generate first of all? There are two ways of generating nuclear energy, either by fission or by fusion. So presently only fission is possible, but uh, fusion is not possible on a sustainable basis. This occurs, this occurs in stars, but not for presently production of energy for our consumption. So when does energy is released in a nuclear reaction? So basically, the bigger nucleus are unstable, so they try to break and they break. During this breaking, energy is released and even the smaller nucleus are also unstable. They want to form bigger nucleus. They will fuse together and during this fusion, uh, during this fusion also energy is released. So fusion is a process of splitting of heavy nucleus into two or more lighter nuclei. Like where, where does it occur? Like the best example or the general example which is taken is uranium. And uranium-235. Uranium-235 is a fissile material. That is, it is readily, it is available as a fuel and readily undergoes fission. So that is, in order for the fission to occur, here also we require, again, it is not going to start the reaction on its own. It requires a slow moving neutron and that slow moving neutron we call it as a thermal neutron as well. So slow moving neutron, if it strikes a uranium nucleus, then it splits into barium plus krypton. So, and also along this process while balancing, it is also releasing three neutrons as well. And then what is the thing will happen if one, if you take one neutron and strikes this uranium, what is going to happen? It will give two daughter nuclei and along with what is going to happen, three neutrons will come. And if these three neutrons will hit three uraniums, then what is going to happen? If these three neutrons will go and hit three uranium atoms, then what is going to happen? Again, it each will... Of again split. Uh, each uranium will again give rise to three neutrons. So three neutrons, so three neutrons like this. Now these three, these three again will hit one uranium means, then what is going to happen again? So in this way, is this reaction okay? Like, can we keep on going on, continue this reaction? If we keep on going this reaction, uh, then what is going to happen? The chain reaction, this is what actually we call as chain reaction. If the reaction goes on, actually for every one splitting, you see that energy which is going to be released is around 226 MeV. So 226 MeV at one at one atomic level, at one nucleus level, it is very huge. Because if you take, if you take uh, one one mole, one mole is 235 grams only, right? Like in one 235 grams, there are 10, 6 into 10 power 23 atoms are there. And if you multiply, if all of them are readily undergoing fission reaction, that is what actually the energy which is going to be released is if you just multiply, for this just multiply and imagine, if you just multiply 10 power 23, you can imagine how much energy is coming out. 226 into mega is 10 power 6. And what is E value is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 into 10 power 23. If you multiply, how much joules of energy is released? We are calculating the powers. Just if you are seeing the powers, if you take this as 100 only, 10 power 8, 10 power 8, 10 power minus 11, 10 power minus 11 becomes approximately 10 power 12 joules. 10 power 12 joules means. So normally, that is per second, that too. Per second, if this much is going undergoing disintegration, so how many zeros are there? 12 zeros, if you put it. 3, 3, 3, 3. So this much of energy released means just 235 grams. Just 235 grams is releasing this much of energy means this is what is a nuclear bomb. That is what happens. Nuclear bomb is just uncontrolled chain reaction is nuclear bomb. 
if you just hit one uranium one uranium with one neutron and if you don't control the reaction it becomes bomb and it is going to destroy cities that is how that much of energy okay so basically if you want to, if you want to use it for sustainable purpose for peaceful purpose if you want to use it we have to control the chain reaction how do we control the chain reaction so basically every time if three neutrons are coming but if we capture two of them we capture three are coming if we capture two of them what is going to happen now this one neutron will only hit one one uranium again you capture two again it is going to hit only one so in this way the chain reaction will not continue then energy is emitted in a like in a controlled manner there is no sudden explosion of energy will not be taking place so if a particle striking so basically which particle should strike is a neutron the particle which is striking and that is what we call it as a uh, yes controlled reaction and uncon uncontrolled basically controlled chain reaction is where which happens in the nuclear reactors the nuclear reactors we want the reaction to be controlled and uh, uncontrolled is where it becomes nuclear bomb now how do we make a nuclear reactor what are the main parts of the nuclear reactor just a theoretical part i think much to uh, see here basically this is a chamber this is a chamber in which what are things are there see this part these are the this red part i'm shading out now this is the the nuclear rods the uranium fuel is there. and it is kept in a shielding and in between these are the control rods are there. so control rods are there to uh, absorb to absorb the um, neutrons so we are saying that for every one uranium it is releasing three neutrons right so control rods so total you see the components are fuel is there control rods are there main thing and moderators are there and coolants are there. so fuel is a fissionable materials like uranium 235 238 plutonium and polonium thorium these are the fissile materials they will be undergoing the decay and whenever they undergo the fission reaction they will release the energy and so next thing is if they release more number of neutrons it under it, be, it becomes uncontrollable so we have to absorb we have to absorb the neutrons so if we are absorbing the neutrons and what are the best examples for absorbing the neutrons is cadmium and boron you should remember this they will ask as a theoretical question they will be asking cadmium and boron are the examples for using the mass control rods to control the fission reaction so cadmium and boron they are control rods and then and even if the neutrons are moving fast reaction will not start if the reaction should start it requires slow moving only slow moving one only can hit it if they are moving fast they cannot hit they cannot strike if they cannot strike then reaction will stop so the neutrons should move but not too fast we have to slow down how to slow down the slowing down is done by moderators moderators are there is to slow down control rods is to capture neutrons to capture neutrons control rods are there and what are moderators are there for moderators are to slow neutrons to slow neutrons and what is the example for moderator is heavy water graphite and barium beryllium beryllium oxide it is so these are the examples for using the, the mass moderators their only purpose is to slow down and so and in this reaction since energy is released the energy is released in the form of heat so we want to cool the whole setup if you want to cool the whole whole, whole setup we need the coolants the coolants can be normal water or even heavy water also can be used if heavy water can be used both as moderated as well as coolant both are okay for heavy water and even we can use liquid oxygen and liquid sodium also we can use as a coolant okay to remove the heat generated from the fission process and once the heat is removed once the heat is removed this is going into the, the chamber where water this is filled with water it becomes steam and this steam is there it is going to be there will be turbine here when there is a turbine here the turbine will rotate as a turbine rotates we know that whenever you rotate there is a ac generator here it will produce a ac current that's it ac current is produced and that is electricity will be going again after it is the steam is cooled down when you cool it down then again it is sent into this 
and again it gets heated up and again it is going to keep on going understood the main parts of nuclear reactor what are the components are and they will ask this for board exam five mark question this is just here to elaborate these things for five marks describe the working for a nuclear reactor they'll ask for board exam just here to draw the diagram say that these are the components and just you can write one equation but this nuclear fission reaction you can write it and that's it done Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. And so coming to fusion. So fusion. So the example for fusion, where it is occurring, it is occurs in the stars. In the, the nuclear fusion to takes place, why only stars? Because they require very high temperature. That is around 10 power 7 or 10 power 8 Kelvin, that high temperatures and also very high pressures of 10 power 6 atmosphere. So only at these high temperature pressures only, these nucleus can come closure. First of all, at these high temperatures, there is no concept of atoms. The concept of atoms come when the around the nucleus electrons are evolved. But at very high temperatures, electrons will come out of the atoms. They'll be simply moving around. They'll be like there'll be only ions, ions freely flowing here and there. That is what we say the state is plasma state. So at very high temperatures, the matter exists in the form of plasma. So there is no liquid, there's no gases there, there's only plasma. We say there is a fourth state of matter. But again, and uh, for this, there are ions. They cannot come closure because of electrostatic repulsion. If you want nucleus to come closure and closure, so they can only come at very high temperatures and very high pressures only they, they can come. And uh, and that is the reason why only in stars these conditions are there. So only in stars at present this nuclear fusion is occurring. And even so, they are the nuclear year. The nuclear reactors are built for the purpose of fusion. We call them as thermonuclear reactors also because they require very high temperatures and pressures. And this is an example. This is an example for uh, the cycle which happens in the sun. So hydrogens are combining and they are forming helium and also one hydrogen. And this is what is the reaction. And so this for every one, one reaction, 21.6 MeV is released. Just remember these values around. Here, this is a 220, 226, around 220 it is released in fission reaction. And here it is around 221.6 it is released. Okay, so fusion is when two lighter nuclei come closer to form heavy nucleides. So this is a concept part of the, the nucleus, uh, nuclei as a chapter. Okay, so we have seen the applications. We have seen the applications here. And, uh, and so... Now coming to the questions, we can solve the questions uh, based on. So at the last, any any questions are there based on radioactivity and uh, finding Q value, binding energy questions? In, okay. Have you done the questions from exercise in the back side? You want to say the numbers? And uh, in the morning, just I said one model question that is also standard model question we haven't covered in the class. Have you understood that? Abhiran? Understood that? You remove that. You have put that emoji. Understood, Abhinan? You are here? Yes, sir. You understood that question? You haven't seen it. Okay, so first doubts, then we'll do the questions based on like how much uranium will be required, like these kind of questions. These kind of questions, how much uranium is required for per hour? Because we know that uh, every one, so they, they are, they'll say that like for one gram, this much of mass is gone. This much of mass is gone means this much mass is converted into energy. For one gram, this much energy came means for this much power, how much mass is required? That's what the questions will be asked. Like. Uh, not exactly completely based on this this topic, the common sense kind of questions. In exercise questions, total we have around 78, yeah, total 90, 98 questions are there. Any doubts? If they are there, we'll do it or we'll start these questions directly first. Hmm? Sir, second question. Second question in exercise? Yes, sir. 
कौन सा टोपिकेशन है सर सर वन बाय वन एल्ड्रेस राइट इट डाउन उठे डाउन एंड लेट डाउन बाय सो फर्स्ट इन एक्सरसाइज एक्सरसाइज क्वेश्चन नंबर टू इन सीए विच वन इयर्स है चिपवा सेवेन पॉइंट टू सेवेन पॉइंट टू सेवेन पॉइंट टू सेवेन क्वेश्चन है एंड लेवेंथ क्वेश्चन एंड लेवेंथ क्वेश्चन � Anything else to be added here? Okay, so we'll start with the question number two of exercise. What is the thing we're having? There is a sample rock is there. Rock again, it is a dating kind of carbon dating or a radioactive dating question kind of this. Or directly they're asking the age, right? So the ratio, the ratio of lead to uranium is found to be 0 0.5. That means so the number of lead by number of uranium is given as 0 0.5. So, what is going to convert into what? Uranium converts into lead, right? It's not the other way, other way around. Lead is smaller, uranium is bigger. So, decay is going in which way? So, this is initially the number is, uh, again here they did not say about some things like uh, initially what to consider. Let us consider initially uranium is there, lead is zero. And finally, if I say this N1 and N2, then what should happen? N1 plus N2. Should be is equal to N naught only, right? And this is N2. Okay, this is N2, the lead by uranium. Can you write in this manner? Hmm? We want to find uh, understanding what is the things I'm writing. They gave lead, I'm calling it as N2 and uh, uranium is N1 and uh, whenever the always the number should be some of the numbers, some of the number of nuclei should be same. In a nuclear fission section, you multiply 10 point. Yes, I, I, Damien, I just took approximate, approximate calculation just to show you. You should take Avogadro number only 16 to 10 point 23. Okay. Right. So we want to find N1, then only we can estimate the age because we know that N is equal to, that is a N1 is equal to N0 into E power minus lambda T. Uh, but we don't know N0 also. How do we proceed? Okay, let us write in N0 only, right? That's it. We can write it here. In the place of N2, we can write N1 plus, in the place of N2, we can write 0 0.5 N1 is equal to N0. So 1.5 N1 is equal to N0. That's it. So what is N1 is coming out to be N0 by 1.5 is equal to N0 into e power minus lambda. That's it. Done. So we got the time, right? Understood, Gagan? Yes, sir. So by 3 is equal to now you have to apply log of this side minus lambda t. This side minus this side. Along 3 by 2 is equal to lambda t. So what is t is equal to 1 by lambda ln 3 by 2. So 1 by lambda. What is 1 by lambda? Again, we should write it in terms of t half. What is relation t half is equal to? 0 0.693 by lambda. So one lambda in the place of one by lambda we can write so in this manner. Okay. So t half by 0 0.693 ln 3 by 2 will be the answer. Okay. Which option is matching here? Ln 2. They are written in ln 2, that is third option is matching. Okay. Next concept of making next side, question number. Uh, 7.2, 7 and 11. 7.2, 7 and 11. Writing. This is a standard model. In the morning also, the question which I have sent is same model. They will give the number of sample before and after in this fraction and they will say to find the time. Okay. Like carbon dating or radioactive dating, it is. this is the same model kind of things. As everyone understood, give me the quick response by raising your hand option. If you understood this model kind of question. Yes. Okay. I got 21. Tanishk, Jeevika, Sankalp, Disha, Damian. Okay. Right. So this kind of question definitely will come. Definitely they'll ask either in either tomorrow's this or Monday's this they'll come. Next, going for concept of leaking exercise, 7.2. Question number, what is this? 7 and 11. So, seventh one. 
the seventh one what is the thing we are having how many alpha particles and beta particles are emitted in the direct question right balancing of the reaction uranium is given uranium 238 is given and 92 so this is converting into lead of 206 plus 82 you can say some x alpha particles come and y beta particles come. whenever they say beta particle means that is electron okay and alpha particle we can write in this manner so we have to balance we have to balance this part like this we have to balance the upper portion we have to balance the lower portion so how many unknowns are there here we don't know x we don't know y two unknowns are there we require two equations right so upper part of equation what we can write 238 is equal to 206 plus 4x this is 4x plus y into 0 then what it is coming out this is a uh, 206 this is 32 is equal to 4x what is x is coming out to be 8 8, eight particles okay. now balance the lower part balance the lower part lower part how do you balance here so i'm writing this side 92 is equal to 82 plus 2x minus y that's it 92 minus this is what will be coming out to 10 10 and we have coming 10 is equal to 8 minus y so what is y is equal to Minus two is coming. That means what is the answer? Anything missing? Sir, it should be two into x actually. Okay, two into x. Okay, I should take sixteen right here. Sixteen. Sixteen I should take. So y is equal to six. That's okay. Yes, sir. So next question number eleven. Question number eleven. Then thorium. Thorium produces, we are saying thorium produces a daughter nuclei that is also radioactive. That is also radioactive, we are saying. And daughter nuclei in turn produces another daughter nuclei and another daughter nuclei B1, D2, we are saying in this way. The process continues until, until it gives bismuth. Finally, bismuth is coming. From starting from thorium, finally it is coming to be bismuth. So in this bismuth, they are given that this is 83. 83 is atomic number and the mass number is given as uh, how much mass number is it? 812. Eight, eight, eight. Printing is still. How can it be 812? Maybe 212. This month, 212. Correct. Not 812. Okay. 90 and 238 we can write. And again, they're asking so during this process, how many alpha particles and beta particles are released? Again, the same way we can do it, right? Just we can forget about these things. Just bring it here and put it here. And say that what we can write here? We can say that X alpha particles came. Why beta particles came? So 2 and 4 minus 1 and 0. What is the first equation? The upper part equation will be what? Upper part equation. I can show in this one. So 238 is equal to 212 plus 4x minus again. Same thing it is coming. Uh, okay, 36 it is coming. 36 or 26 it is coming. 26 not is there is a go. Printing mistake, there must be some printing mistake here. What is the number? 26. Or it should be, what is the bismuth mass number? Two not nine, no, sir. Okay, so minus they have given now. 212. 212 only there to be done. Yeah, minus they given so 212 if they are taking then it is not coming right because they are saying answer is 4. Answer should be 4 means. They have taken thorium as 228. Okay, 228 they are taken. So that's why yeah. printing sticks are there here. So just you have to correct it. Uh, so correction, if we take it, then you will be getting the answer. So this is, we take it as, it as 228. So 228 here. So then if you take it, then 4x, this is 0. Then we will be getting x is equal to, that is a, 16 is equal to 4x, x is equal to 4 will come. Then again, you put it back in the second equation, you get 5 values. I'll get 1. Okay, ready? Yes. Again, this is a standard model question. Tomorrow, the, any test, they ask, these are the standard model balancing, balancing of nuclear reactions. It is how many alpha and beta. So these questions only they'll be asking. You cannot miss these kind of questions. Simple direct questions. Next, anything else is there? Concept application exercise 7.1, 7.3. 7.4, we'll do some questions. 
सेवन पॉइंट थ्री बेस्ड ऑन एक्टिविटी क्वेश्चन इफ यू फील एनी डिफिकल्टी आस्क विल डू इट नाउ Sir, problems based on power emitted. Yes, problem based on power. Yes, we do that. Uh, you the given the difference between difference in nuclear fission and total energy produced per hour energy, uranium. Ah, that kind of question. Yes. That is what we will go for. Directly we will go for those kind of questions based on power. Okay, it is like work power energy type of questions. Here. So it is given that uh, this is what uh, so nuclear fission. This occurring one gram only. We took one gram. In one gram, the mass lost is given. Mass loss delta m is given as zero point nine two micro milligram. It is milligrams. So you have to be careful. So minus three grams it is. Then the efficiency of the powerhouse. That means for this energy. So how much energy it will be converted first of all? Energy released in this process is what zero point nine two into ten power minus three into ten power minus three kg. In SI units into C square, then you'll get energy in joules, right? Okay. So now they are saying, uh, but efficiency. If this much of energy is released, but is it everything converted into electricity? The total energy release not converting only ten percent of energy release. Only ten percent of energy release is converted. That is what they are saying. But finally, we want to produce continuously power. If you want to produce a power, what is the relation between power and energy? Power is equal to electric power, electric energy by time. So, what is electric energy required is equal to power into time. And how much time they are saying per hour? So, per hour means how much time you should take? Power is given as four hundred mega. This ten power six and time is given as per hour. You have to convert into seconds. That is how much? Sixty into sixty. This much of electric energy is required, right? So this much of energy, energy is electric energy is coming from where? This much of electric energy is coming from. So this energy out of which ten percent is there. That is ten percent is zero point one times of. I can substitute this electric energy here. I am doing the question from two sides, from the. First sentence I've written some information. From last sentence I've written some information, and now I'm joining the both the ends. So can I write in the place of electric energy required is four hundred into ten power six into what we can say uh, that is sixteen to sixty is electric energy required. That is zero point one times of energy that is due to mass mass which is uh, which is mass defect which is required into c square. Okay, so that means can we get delta m value? Delta m value is coming out how much? Four hundred into sixty, or else we can write it as what? Ah, uh, six into four twenty four. Just calculation. Can leave it in this way. No calculations required. Just four hundred into ten power six into. Do finally until final step. Don't do any calculation. Divide by zero point one into c square. So this much of mass should uh, decrease, or this much of mass should be lost per hour. Right, but this much of mass we know that. So far, uh, what 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 they said, zero point nine two milligrams is lost mass for one for how much one gram for one gram of uranium. This much is gone. So for x grams, how much is uranium which is required per hour? They are asking, right? Understanding? It's like 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 for one pen if it is ten rupees. Per hundred pence, how much rupees? That's what kind of thing it is. Understand? Hmm. So what yes, are the things? Just once again, I'll review here. So they said two things here. What are the two things they said? Just.
Okay, so uh, yes, what are the things they said is they said first for one gram this much of mass we got, and they said uh, for we want a four hundred megawatt power to be produced. For that, how much uranium you require? So we cannot take one gram and say for one gram is may not be sufficient. We need certain amount of uranium is required. How much uranium is required? They are asking. So how much uranium is required for that? So we said for for this much power we have to produce this much of electrical energy. And from where electric energy is coming, it is coming from 10% of energy released. And why the energy is released is due to the mass decreasing. And we know this much mass should decrease. And if this much mass is decreasing, then how much uranium we require? So that is what we are doing. So finally, what is the final step we want is X grams of uranium. How do we get this X? If we do the cross multiplication, so what will be coming out? This is in grams, but this is in micrograms. Just you have to be careful. This is in kg here. This is in this is in SI units. And if you convert this also in kgs, what will be coming out? So just divide them, then the finally the answer will be coming in grams. Understanding? Anywhere it became tricky or is it understood? Understood. Has everybody followed? Hmm? Same way, the same model, the things will be saying in this manner. So again, if you see the next question also, they are saying what nuclear reactor is there. Just zoom in. Again, it is generating 250 megawatt. Again, power is given. Efficiency is given. So again, power, power is given. That is electrical energy by time. So electrical energy is equal to again, power into time. From where this electrical energy is coming, it is efficiency. This is output. Output by input. Input is energy released. Energy released. So if you take it, so electrical energy is equal to what we can say? Electrical energy is equal to efficiency into energy released. And why the energy is released, you can substitute there. So energy release is due to the delta M into C square. So that in this way we can proceed. And what is the amount of uranium used in this fuel per year they are asking? That means here time should be how much? The time should be taken. Uh, one day has 86400 seconds and 365 if you multiply, you will get the things in this one. In the place of electrical energy, you can add power into time. So power is 250 into 10 power 6 megawatt, they said. And time is 365 into 86400. Efficiency is given as 25%, 0.25. And we will get, again, delta M value will get, right? Delta M into C square. We will get delta M value. Once you get delta M, again, so... What is the thing they are saying? So once you get a uh, number of moles, huh? one thing which is missing, anything missing? Ha, huh, yes. Okay, but they are saying here, instead of saying uh, delta M, they are saying per, per fission, per fission they are saying. That means what? Energy release. How do you find energy release? Okay, so for one fission, for one fission, if you know the energy, then so for the required electrical energy release, we'll be getting here. Instead of writing delta m c square here, what we should write? Just leave it. Just leave it in this way only. Just leave it. Energy release is total number of fissions required into energy release per per fission. We should take it. Energy release. This is what we should. We can take it right. Now we know this value. Now we'll get the number of fissions. If you know number of fissions, then if you know the number of fissions. Then that is the number of atoms required. If you know the number of atoms required, then we'll know the number of moles required or number of that is what we'll come. We'll know the number of fissions, then we'll get number of atoms, then we'll know number of atom means we'll know the number of grams or kgs we'll be getting. Understanding how do we connect the things? Same kind of questions, just the information given is different. Following? Yes, sir. Okay. So the same model questions, that is what you see. How much, uh, if they're asking how many fissions to occur, how many grams required, how much mass is required per year. Same things only. Now that, that thing different will be coming. And uh, output power, that is nothing but, uh, how much is uh, uh, for each fission, this is what is given. So again, efficiency, they'll be giving, and energy released. So, how many grams of deuterium until now uranium? Now, even in the case of fusion, 
the fuel is deuterium so that is what how long the lamp will go on based on again how much energy is being produced so efficiency given and how much amount is required so this is what the questions are okay so just to do these examples once again with some clarity with some clarity do this then do the remaining questions again don't go for quantity just do the things limited things only do it clearly and then so then you'll be able to do the things in good man okay right so what are the things you have done today understood the nuclear chapter Give me a response if you have understood the topic. What are things we have done? Okay, so even for tomorrow's exam also you do whatever the possibility and Sunday, Sunday also you sit and you do the things. Nucleus chapter is important for both mains and advanced. Compulsory question will come and make first make the formula sheet. Make the formula sheet. Limited things only is there. And uh, so... If you want formulas in one place, I'll send. Uh, let's say, again, you have, I think now you have some core concept book is there with you, right? You have the book? Yes, sir. Okay. So you see that part as well. And uh, okay, one more thing is this one. Just one, one small thing which we missed. One, just two minutes, we'll stop it. Just we'll complete this one. Uh, nuclear force. We haven't done the, the properties of nuclear force. So, what are the few properties of nuclear force you're having? So, nuclear force, it acts between the nucleons, right? It acts between the nucleons and nuclear force are the strongest force in the nature. Very short range, that is the range is only only one Fermi level is around 1 to 1.5 Fermi level only it will be existing. It is a non-central force. That means it doesn't act between the centers. It is a non-conservative force also. It is independent of the charge. It is 100 times stronger than electric static force. It is not 10, this is 10 power 38 times stronger than gravitational force. And the, the nuclear force between the nucleons is due to what reason? So, like if there is one mass, if there is one mass, there is a the explanation is what? How does this particle exert the force on this? How does this particle exert the force on this? If there's a charge and there's a charge, how does this charge will exert the force on this? How does this charge know the presence of this charge? What do we say? We said as a concept of field. Isn't it? We introduce a concept of field theory. So field theory says that mass will produce gravitational field and gravitational field will produce gravitational force. But there is also the theory of particle theory. The particle theory is exchange of particles. Exchange of particles is also there. That is, that is here, this mass will send some gravitons. And these gravitons will come here. And this particle also will send some gravitons. And the, the interaction is due to the particle exchange. That is a particle theory. So the interaction force is due to particle exchange. So the gravitation force is due to gravitons is a theory. And these charges are being exchanged due to photons. Photons, this particle will send some photons, this particle will send some photons. So like that, there will be the particles are being exchanged between the and the responsibility is that. And here, the nuclear force is due to the meson exchange. One, that is a, a proton, proton. If there is a strong nuclear force, this is going to send some mesons. This is going to send some mesons. And due to the meson exchange, the strong nuclear force is there. And between neutron and proton also, the mesons will be exchanged. Between neutron and neutron also, the meson will exchange. So the nuclear force between, which force is stronger here? Which nuclear force is stronger here? Between proton, proton, or between proton, neutron, or between neutron, neutron, which nuclear force is stronger here? Here neutron, neutron. Here also nuclear force is there. Here also nuclear force is there. Here, not only nuclear force is there, here also there is an electric, electrostatic force is there. I am not talking about electrostatic force here. 
I'm only talking about the nuclear force. Which nuclear force is stronger here? So it is independent of charge. You see this word, that's why I'm stressing here. The nuclear force is independent of charge means all are equal. All nuclear forces are equal only. If they say the net force between the proton and proton means the net force, then we should include both nuclear force and electric force. Understanding? If they say nuclear force, means you should say all of them are equal. If they say net force means, then you should say net force between proton and proton is less. Understanding? Yes. Huh? Okay. So this is it. We are done. And uh, just uh, here, just uh, we have uh, another another diagram. We have seen the same thing. So breeder reactors also like different different react reactors. You have high pressure reactors, but we don't need all those things. If they say again for case and kind of things, just we have to cover a little bit more theory part. Uh, we'll see that uh, as a theory part. Breeder reactors, if they say they are the ones where uranium fuel will undergo fission reaction and it is going to produce plutonium. Again, what is the specialty of plutonium is? It is also nuclear fuel. So, breeder reactors are those reactors which will produce another nuclear fuel. They are breeder reactors. And already we have seen fusion. So, this is how the fusion reaction takes place. Uh, final reaction is four hydrogens will combine. This is one way of writing it. How the reaction step by step will go on is in this way we can represent. Okay, finally around 26 or 22.6. This small difference is there. There are two cycles will go on. Proton proton cycle is there and also carbon nitrogen cycle is there. We'll see this theoretical part. It's not that important. Just we have to see the things. Okay. So, so shall we stop it here? If there are any doubts, you can ask. Or else we'll continue in tomorrow's class.